Welcome back to an all Ask Jason episode of This Week in Startups, and we were flooded with great questions. I love answering these questions because they make me think about my own investments, my own companies, my own businesses, and just it really gets you debating important topics. Uh, Gana asks, we have a prototype and going to be in beta in about two or three weeks. What are the top five things I should consider as I'm looking for funding and pitching to investors? Great question. Um, in 2016, um, and you're asking for the top five things, so that's a very specific. Off the top of my head, um, you're gonna wanna have a prototype and a product that's clean and simple. Uh, sometimes people come in and they think that having seven features will impress people. The really savvy investors understand that most products that scale become big in the world, they have one or two really simple, elegant features. Instagram, you upload a video, you comment, or you upload an image and you comment. Then they added video to Instagram a couple years later after many people were you know, uh, asking for it. In other words, they didn't have like a really bad video feature. They didn't have messaging in the first version of Instagram. You uploaded a f picture and you picked a filter and they didn't have that many filters and they kept you know, increasing the number of filters. So less is more. So have a beautifully designed product is number one. Number two, if you can have traction and understand your key metrics, the key performance uh, metrics of your business, this is gonna be super, super important. So if you come in and you've got some fakaka, you know, crazy metric that you think is important, like the number of swipes, you know, or the number of hearts, you know, that might be something that a VC or an investor looks at and says, you, you didn't pick something important like the number of unique users every day or the number of minutes spent in the app. It could be that swipes are the most important thing in Tinder, who knows, but it might be that actual matches and people starting a conversation in Tinder are more important or the percentage of conversations started to matches, right? Or the number of matches. And I think understanding your own metrics and just having, this will be my third, having a robust understanding and infrastructure around the metrics of your business, which is to say, if you come in and you've got Google Analytics or Chartbeat or Intercom or Mixpanel, there's a ton of these different services out there that you know will manage all of the metrics of your business. And they're usually super cheap uh, for startups. You can look and see the, if they have startup pricing. But if you have these things lined up and you can look at different cohorts who are using your product, the amount of traffic you have, so that when VCs ask you these important questions and investors ask you these important questions like how's traffic, you can give a robust answer. You can pull up a chart. If you can pull up a chart, oh my God, so much better. Um, number four, why are you doing this? What exactly is your goal here? You wanna have some large, big, you know, goal involved in your startup? And the answer should, shouldn't be to make a lot of money. If you say to a VC, I'm doing this for the money. And if you say, I'm, you need to do this so you can make a lot of money. We all have the signaling, which is the people who come into the business for money quit very quickly. So you've basically immediately DQ'd yourself. You disqualified yourself by saying you're in it for the money. If you are in it for the money, shut up and don't tell anybody. And you know, a lot of people want a lot of money. I understand money's power. People, some people grow up poor. They see money as freedom. They see money as something that will help. I, I don't disagree. Your life does get better at a certain point if you have a certain amount of money. It's obvious. Well, the studies have shown that. But that doesn't mean great businesses are built by people who are driven by money. In fact, the kind of it's the opposite in startups because startups are so painful and the mortality rate my God, is so high. Most of them die. Most people don't make any money. Most people lose years of their lives and tons of hair and get tons of anxiety from them. That we know that if you're in for the money, it's going to be a problem. So you want to have some big audacious goal and motivation. You know, this whole start with why or the purpose-driven culture, you know, that kind of stuff. It sounds like it's, you know, kind of like um, soft but it actually is kind of meaningful. So if I tell you, hey, listen, I do This Week in Startups because I love interviewing people and I love helping entrepreneurs and I love entrepreneurship and I love startups. And uh, yeah, it happens to do a million dollars a year in revenue and it happens to get 100,000 people watch every episode and it's the millions of people have watched it. Okay, I didn't start with a million dollars in revenue. It was embedded in a whole bunch of other stuff and the other stuff included that I actually love doing this show every day or every twice a week. I wish I could do it every day. I would do it every day, actually. I love doing the show. I love getting your feedback on it. I love getting a high five. So that purpose, 
That'd be my number four, and I'm not giving these in ranked order. And number five, why now? Why is this business gonna work now? as opposed to other times when people tried it. It could be because mobile phones exist. It could be because of GPS. It could be because of battery life. It could be because of solar cells have become so cheap. Who knows? There is some reason why there, you know, this opportunity will work at this moment in time and not in the past because there's tons of entrepreneurs out there who have been trying things for a long time. So why now? It could be broadband, it could be screen resolution, but I would look for the why now in your business at every chance you get. I hope that is helpful to you. Uh, another good thing to do, have some advisors, that'd be number six. Maybe go to a great incubator and have um, you know, some investment from a uh, kick-ass entrepreneur turned angel investor. Wink, ding. <laughs>I could talk to you all day about Squarespace. I love this product. All of our sites are built on Squarespace. Why? Because I can just say, hey, Bryce, hey, Ashley, hey, Jackie, just change this on the Squarespace site. Hey, can we get this up on the Launch Festival site? Hey, can we get this up on the Launch Mobile site? Hey, on the Scale Conference, on this, on that. It instantly gets done. It's easy to use. Squarespace makes beautiful websites so, so simply. They have all these great design templates. You pick one, and all of a sudden, it looks like you spent a quarter million dollars on your website. Literally, these designers are... I mean, I mean, a lot of designers are very upset. A lot of web shops are very upset about Squarespace. I've seen this many times where they would normally spend, you know, people would spend $20,000, $50,000, $100,000 on a website, and Squarespace does it for dollars a month, like $10 a month. It's unbelievably affordable. And everything, it starts at eight bucks a month, by the way. Everything is responsive. So when you pull it up on your iPad or your phone, you have to pinch and zoom to see the website. It all just works. And you're not at, you know, uh, you know, bent over a barrel by all these crazy developer freelancers who then disappear for months. They go, you know, uh, on a hike and they go bike across the United States while your website still isn't responsive or still isn't working. You need to have a professional group behind your website Website, and that is Squarespace. They also support uh, e-commerce now, and they just keep adding features. Like they have a calendar feature that's really good right now, and there's all these little plugins and little, you know, craftsmanship that make the site look so good. I love the product. You can start your free trial today with no credit card required, and when you decide to sign up for Squarespace, please use the offer code TWIST to get 10% off your first purchase. Squarespace, build it beautiful, build it beautiful. Please, please. It's a lot of ugly stuff going on in the world. A lot of ugly websites. Just use Squarespace and make the world beautiful. That's not their tagline. But I love beautiful websites. When I see a beautiful website for a conference, I buy a ticket. When I see a beautiful website for a product, I buy the product. When I see a beautiful website for a service or a startup, I want to meet with them. Go to squarespace.com and have a great, beautiful website. It's trusted by millions of people, including some of the most respected brands of the world. Their art, their technology is state of the art, secure, easy to use, scalable. You don't need to have a developer do it. I could talk for days. Thank you, Squarespace, for being one of my longest running sponsors for This Week in Startups. I truly appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Um, okay, let's get back to the program.